All right, let's talk about cynodonts. Uh, a cynodont is a, I would call maybe a primitive synapsid, so one of the earlier synapsids appears in the late Permian. Um, so we're talking about the end of the uh, Paleozoic. And it's not a mammal, but is, a, is an ancestor, so leading to the mammals. Um, cynodonts, some of them survived the Permian extinction. This guy, they say, is about 1.8 meters long, which is about 6 feet. So a pretty good size animal. So when mammals first evolved from something like the cynodont, um, we usually place that appearance just, uh, the Permian extinction was around 250 um, million years ago, and so just a little bit past that, 220 million years, so a little bit into the Mesozoic, you see the um, fossils of the first mammals. They're really believed to have been much smaller than the cynodonts. Um, so we usually say that the early mammals were small and shrew-like. So if you don't know what a shrew is, you should probably Google it and get a picture in your brain. It's kind of a rodent-looking, uh, just generalized rodent kind of thing. But that's often a definition or a description that's given to the first mammals. Tree dwelling, so we usually say arboreal, A R. B-O-R-E-A-L, that means lives in the trees. Um, could have been nocturnal. They make that guess just based on the size of the eyes. And But the mammals really didn't take off and start really diversifying until after the Cretaceous extinction. So you'll know that's the disappearance of the dinosaurs, among other things. But the mammals have peaked in terms of diversity, and so we're on a decline of the number of mammalian species at this point. There's only about 5,400, maybe 6,000, if we want to go, depending on what source you're looking at, species of mammals. It's a guess. Um, there's more species of reptiles than that, and there's a lot more species of fish so mammals are really the smallest slice of the vertebrates. And vertebrates are a very small slice of the animal kingdom. Um, but we are particularly interested in mammals, I guess, because we're one of them. Then about 70% of all mammals, so that puts us into the 4,000 range of the species, maybe 4,000 species of mammals are rodents, bats, shrews, or moles. So that only leaves 30% of the mammals that are something other than rodents, bats, shrews, or moles. But that 30% of that really tiny slice of the animal kingdom is really what you see at the city zoo. So lions and tigers and bears and such. All right, what are the mammalian traits? The derived traits of mammals are hair made of keratin and mammary glands which make milk. We are endothermic, and that means we, create, we have a sustained body temperature to, despite what the temperature of the environment is. We have a four-chambered heart. The only other group that has a full, fully four-chambered heart are the birds, which is a reptilian group. We have respiration using a diaphragm. So the diaphragm is this flat um, sheet of muscle that really creates kind of a transverse section through the body right in the abdomen. And it marks the bottom of the chest cavity and it marks the ceiling of the abdominal cavity. We have a placenta in most mammals. There are some egg-laying mammals, though, but most have a placenta, which brings um, the circulatory system to a, an internal embryo. 
We looked in lab at the teeth. You remember from the Evolution Mini Museum, we looked at the rodent teeth, the carnivore teeth, the artiodactyl teeth, and the primate teeth. So the teeth are specialized for their eating ha for eating habits. And when you look at like fish, for example, fish all all the teeth are the same, sharp, or um, even for reptiles that have teeth, just sharp. But in the mammals, you see molars, which are more flattened for grinding and things along that line. And our ear structures are considerably different than what a fish, for example, has, because a fish can detect vibration in the water, but that's a very different thing than detecting vibration through air. You don't need to memorize the, the ear um, anatomy, but it's a different anatomy than you would see in, a, in an aquatic organism. And really, hearing is detection of vibration. So the three clades of mammals are the monotremes, which lay eggs. They don't have nipples, so they just secrete milk through holes in their skin, and the babies just lick it off, lick it off of their fur. So examples of this are duck-billed duck platypus and echidna. I'll show you some pictures. Marsupials, these have a pouch. So the pouch is called the marsupium. There are nipples in the pouch where the milk comes from. So a teeny tiny embryo is born, a vaginal birth, and then the embryo is about the size of a gummy bear. And then that embryo, that, that little guy climbs up into the pouch and starts sucking on a nipple and continues to develop. So most of the marsupials are found in Australia. One ex exception to that would be the possum in North America, which I have one that lives in my backyard somewhere. They're kind of mean, but um, they do eat a lot of bugs. And then eutherians, that's us. These are the, animal, the mammals that have a true placenta. The embryo develops pretty well in the body um, before birth. So there's only a few groups of monotremes. There's a limited number, but a slightly larger number, but a limited number of marsupials. Most mammals are eutherians like us. So here's a picture of platypus and echidna. These are the ones that lay eggs and they don't have nipples. Marsupials have a pouch. This is called the Tasmanian devil. Most of your marsupials are in Australia, so kangaroo and koala would be common examples of marsupials. And then the eutherians. So eutherians are, I made a list here, lions and tigers and bears and elephants and porcupines and rats. I, I listed everything I could think of. I sat here for a while and thought of all of them. There's probably more. So how do the primates fit in? Well, primates are eutherians that um, it's a special, specific group. And the thing about primates is we have what's called the opposable thumb. So there's a lot of animals that are eutherians, like your dog or your cat. But the five fingers on the hand or on the paw face forward. And they can't grab things. So the hand, all five fingers face forward. There's no way to really grab things. They can hit things with their paw, but they can't grab. So the opposable thumb, if you hold your hand up in front of you right now, and you can see how your thumb can turn and pin, touch each finger, you can touch your, the fingerprint on each finger to the fingerprint on your thumb. So we call that the pad of your finger. And your thumb can touch and, and face each of your other fingers. So that allows you to grab, and that makes climbing and such even better. And then binocular vision, a little bit by not more binocular than some of the other groups. But the opposable thumb is really the really the, the key thing. So in this picture, I'm showing you a, a picture, a primate that you may not be aware of. Tarsier it is belongs to a group called the prosimians. But look at these little hands. Look at these little old man hands. That's what it looks like here. You see these hands? I mean, these are you can see that the similarity there. They have the opposable thumb. But we are not in the group of the prosimians. We are in the group 
So we're not in this group. We're in a group called the simians. And that includes monkeys and apes. And monkeys and apes are two different groups. So we didn't evolve from a monkey. Um, we, are, we are an ape, though. Ape is just a clade name. So it's the common name for the clade called um, hominidae. Um, the common name is ape. So this is a howler monkey. Monkeys are... Some of them live in what's called the Old World. If you think about like Christopher Columbus, they used to call things the Old World and the New World. The New World are the Americas, although we don't have any monkeys in North America. So monkeys that live in Central and South America are called New World monkeys. Monkeys that live in Africa and Asia are called Old World monkeys, but that's a different group than the apes. So we're, we're, both these groups are primates, but we're apes, we're not monkeys. So I want to emphasize that ape is the common name for the group. So we've, you know, we've had that on a lot of things. You know, Platyhelminthes has a common name called flatworm. So hominidae is the family name here. And the common name for the hominidae are the apes. So a lot of people use the name ape, I think, to refer to gorillas. But gorillas are apes, but that's not... You know, gorillas are a particular species that belong to the clade of apes. So it's not, apes are not just gorillas. And so gibbons are apes, humans are apes, chimpanzees are apes, gorillas are apes, orangutans are apes. And there's one other guy, the bonobo, which is not pictured here, but bonobo looks just like a chimpanzee, to be honest with you. So we're in the family hominidae. So we are in... Um, class mammalia, order primate, family hominidae, which are the apes. And we looked at the, um, the skulls of the apes in the, in the mini museum when we looked at gorilla. I think we had gorilla, orangutan, chimpanzee, and human. So that was particularly just apes. All right, so now this is the the tree, the de more detailed tree for the uh, hominidae. So here you have hominidae here. Uh, so baboons are not in the group. But roughly speaking, these are your hominidae. Although gibbons are a little bit of a side group. But you have orangutan, gorilla, chimpanzee, and human. So here we are. Just, you don't need to know the scientific name, chimpanzee and human. Now, on this diagram, like before, they're definitely favoring detail on the species of humans. So they're not giving you any detail on these other uh, groups. But the humans, you can see um, a fair number. Now, at what point do you say this is human? Well, that's, there's, no, there's no answer to that. Usually... Um, yeah, usually Artipithecus is considered um, hominin. Sometimes we use this term hominin or hominid. Um, but usually the um, Australopithecus are definitely considered early humans. So that's a genus name, Australopithecus. And then you have some different species. And these all went extinct, uh, as far as we can tell. Paranthropus. Definitely on that group. And then Homo. So you have, you know, Homo isn't the only human species, but again, it kind of depends on what you define as human. But usually what scientists will include would be Australopithecus, Paranthropus, and then all the Homo species. Artipithecus, and yeah, maybe. That's, I mean, they, they even have a question mark here. But these three for sure. So these are considered humans. Um, modern human, though, is Homo sapien. And it's really hard for us to know, <laughs> like, is Neanderthal man a different species? Now that we're doing a lot of DNA testing, we're finding that probably no, it's not a different species because certainly there's Neanderthal DNA in Homo sapien DNA, and so that... If you remember our definition of species, anything that can reproduce fertile viable offspring. 
including you, represents um, the same species. But in any case, we, we do our best to try to classify things. It's hard with fossils. But Australopithecus, Paranthropus, and Homo represent human species. And we are apes, because apes is just the common name for the family hominidae. So Australopithecus, they found a really, um, this is considered a really pretty complete skeleton um, of a, what they believe to be a female of Australopithecus afarensis. And this was found in the 70s and it was during my lifetime and it was publicized quite a bit. They named her Lucy. Um, you can see a reconstruction of what they think the skull of Australopithecus probably looked like compared to, and they do this all by measurements and modeling. It's, you know, as good as we can get compared to a human skull. So there's definitely similarities and differences for sure. Uh, I don't have anything on the uh, Paranthropus. For the Homo species, you know, these are going to be things that are more recent in the fossil record and probably more likely to be found in terms of fossils. So Homo erectus uh, is one of those species. Homo neanderthalensis, we're all in the same genus. So I do want you to memorize the classification groups of humans. So domain Eukarya, sub, uh, kingdom Animalia, superphylum Deuterostomia. So we're Deuterostomes. We're chordates. We're vertebrates. And then um, I eliminate some of the groups, but we'll go with mammals, primates, hominidae, which are the apes. Homo. Homo sapien means um, it means wise man. Wise man, I believe is the translation of that. So that's that's really, you know, of course we would name ourselves that. That's kind of funny, actually. Of course we're wise man. I don't know for that wise, but let's, you know, we'll let it we'll let it ride. All right, that's the end of your chapter 29 lecture.